The Tao of Self-Confidence, episode 646. Welcome to the Tao of Self-Confidence, where I share stories of amazing women who have discovered their inner journey to self-confidence. Visit our website at thetaoofselfconfidence.com. Your inner journey to self-confidence awaits. Well, hello, friend. Welcome to the Tao of Self-Confidence, where I share stories of amazing women who have discovered their inner journey to self-confidence. I'm your host today, Sheena Yap Chan, and today I have a phenomenal lady on the show today. She's a travel expert and writer, and I'm really excited to have her on and share her story with us today on self-confidence. So without further ado, I'm going to introduce you to Kyla Yu. Kyla, how are you today? Maybe you can fill in a little bit more about yourself to the listeners. Yeah, my name is Kyla Yu, and I'm a travel writer and expert. I've actually worn many hats of many careers throughout the years, but travel is currently my focus. And with Kiki, we just released a book called 30 Day Travel Challenge, a best-selling book, and it's all about how to make your travel dreams a reality. And within it, it deals with a lot of self-confidence building exercises within the book, dealing with self-limiting beliefs that keep people from traveling as much as they would like. Awesome. Well, thanks for sharing that. And Kyla, what's your cultural background? I'm Taiwanese. Awesome. Well, thanks for sharing that. And what'd be your favorite self-confidence quote? Oh, self-confidence quote. I think there's one by Coco Chanel, and I'm going to butcher it, but I don't know the exact quote, but basically I feel like when you look good, you feel confident. And that just has to do with self-care. So Basically, she said with a fresh coat of red lipstick, a girl can take on anything. So for me, that means, you know, making sure I practice great self-care. I love massages, so I like to take time out of my day to make sure that I get these treatments for myself instead of just being a workaholic, which is my tendency. Awesome. Well, thanks for sharing that great quote. And, you know, my grandma's the same way. She won't step out of the house until she has red, red lipstick on. So I love that your grandma. <laughs> yeah. I mean, it's that's how she, you know, sees herself or carries herself. Right. And it's kind of like her staple <laughs> pretty much. I love that your grandma has that staple for her. That's like her her way of stepping out and saying, you know, this is me. <laughs> so I think it's great. And I love that quote. So thanks for sharing that. And in your own words, how do you define self-confidence? I think self-confidence is all about self-love. There's a real thin line between self-confidence and being egotistical. And it's easy to get those confused. But I think self-confidence comes from an inherent love for oneself and others. Whereas egoism is kind of like, we were talking yesterday with some friends of mine and about how we try to build a shield of awesomeness to kind of protect us from the world. Just so with accomplishments and stuff like that, that's more in the egoism category. I think self-confidence comes from not your accomplishments and not your material outside belongings, but from just an inherent belief in yourself. Thanks for sharing that. And, you know, I totally agree because sometimes we can get caught up being defined by what society labels us or what we feel like we should be labeled as, especially in the world of social media. And we have to realize that, you know, confidence comes from within and none of those things will matter, you know, even if you get them or not. I mean, if you get them, it's great, but it's not like the end of the world. So thanks for sharing that great definition. And Kyla, what was your life like before your discovery of self-confidence? Well, I didn't grow up very confident. I feel like I was just kind of a troubled child with self-confidence from the beginning. But I think what really, I guess, made me kind of shy was that I skipped the second grade. I think I remember myself being relatively normal before that and outgoing and everything. But then when I skipped the second grade, I just felt like I didn't belong anymore. And I just kind of became shy, extremely shy. So much so that in junior high, they would have students come on the stage to accept awards, like for best attendance or best grades or whatever. And I went to the office and said, can you please take my name off the list? Because I don't feel like walking on stage. That's how terrified I was and to give presentations and stuff like that. It was only when I got to college and I met a mentor who kind of coaxed me to come out of my shell. I started performing and that helped me 
also meet new people and performing on stage. Of course, you can't really hide and be shy in that circumstance. So I think it was in college that I started to develop my own self-confidence. Thanks for sharing that. And I think that's something we all go through, right? We're so afraid to like shine sometimes, right? I don't know, maybe it's because the way we're brought up, especially as like Asian women, we're always told to like never make any noise, kind of like be in the yeah. background. Um, so when we get something or like, you know, when we have an award or we win something, we just t- tell people, you know, you don't need to announce it, you know, just keep it quiet. right? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> don't tell anyone. Yeah. But I mean, you know, that's something we should celebrate, celebrate everything, right? And we should be proud of what we have achieve. And, you know, I know you mentioned college helped you out, but was there any other moments in your life where, you know, it helped you become more confident, especially, you know, becoming like a travel writer and expert? Like, was there any aha moments? I think an aha moment, which is kind of an unexpected aha moment, but I was in a rock band for a long time. And this has to go more with the egoism, which is I thought that's what I wanted to do with my life. But after several years of pursuing it, I discovered that it didn't make me happy at all. It was actually making me miserable, just the constant grind and just being on stage. I didn't really enjoy the stress of it. And it was only on a trip. We were in Indonesia, I think, Penang. And we were playing at this awesome hotel. And I just couldn't enjoy any of it because I was so stressed out about the performances. And I think I had kind of a light bulb moment that what I loved about being in the band was traveling, <laughs> not a, not the performing part. So why wouldn't I just find a career where I could travel and not have to sing for my supper? So I think that built a lot of confidence just finding what I believe is my true calling in life instead of spending more wasted time pursuing something that isn't my life's dream. Thanks for sharing that. And I think that's great. You were able to realize that, right? Because sometimes we feel like we have no other options, right? Like this is it. I mean, and then we go through life thinking like this is what's planned out for us. Um, But you said, you know, I love to travel, but I hate being on a band or playing music on stage. You know, there has to be another way. And, you know, you went out there and did it. You found another way to travel, right? And because of that, what's your life been like now? It's been a really exciting I guess three or four years since we've been doing this. I'm a kind of a travel duo with Kiki. And these days we are able to connect with brands that we love and showcase different resorts and destinations around the world. And one thing we're really promoting right now is over tourism. I don't know if everyone's aware, but over tourism is a huge problem in the travel industry. You know, everyone wants to go to Paris and Kyoto and those places are getting really damaged by pollution and all kinds of other issues. So we really want to promote under tourism, places that are off the beaten path that people can discover and share with the world instead of sharing the same hundred places that everyone's sharing. Thanks for sharing that. And, you know, that's the first time I've heard, you know, the term over tourism. I mean, it happens because I'm from the Philippines and last year sometime there was a popular beach that had to um, be closed for like six months just to heal because the corals and the life like the sea life was just dying. Right. So they had to close all the resorts and had to like heal so that the beach would be beautiful again. Right. And it's amazing. Like, you know, those places are great. But yeah, you never you go there and you're like, it's not what it looks like in the pictures. Right. So I think it's great that you guys are doing something different. Right. Um, promoting under tourism, which is great because there are so many places out there that we've never even heard of or never even knew existed. And it's just as beautiful as well and probably even cheaper because nobody knows about it. So thanks for sharing that. And, you know, to the woman who's listening to your episode, she may be in her own journey to self-confidence. What would be that one tip you would give to her? Oh, I'm trying to narrow it down into one tip, but I think it's just important to do a lot of self-reflection. I think so many of us think we know ourselves so well and we don't know ourselves at all. And whether what self-reflection works best for you, whether that be journaling. For me, I love meditation. I feel like when I meditate, I really get to calm down all the crazy voices in my head. And there's always like a voice there that's attacking me and just being critical and trying to pick away at my confidence. But the more I meditate, I can kind of single out that voice and channel more productive voices into my life. So I guess in short, I would really recommend meditating and meditating doesn't need to be the sitting around, you know, people 
always say I can't sit still for that long. You can meditate just by washing the dishes and just paying attention to the hot water over your hands and just being fully in the moment or exercise can be meditation. I would just recommend not listening to music and just concentrating on the exercise. There's many forms. Awesome. Well, thanks for sharing that. I totally agree with you. I mean, I remember when I started meditating, like I would sit down and listen to some music and it was just not for me. I would like fall asleep and I was just like, meditation isn't for me. But when I found something that I like doing and it was for me therapeutic at the same time, then that's when I knew that was it. Like for me, jogging outside is really therapeutic for me. Cleaning sometimes is therapeutic because it's just like, you know, you really do kind of start, you know, thinking about stuff, right, that you never thought was that you you probably wouldn't think about on a regular basis, right? And just yeah. channeling it, channeling out that self negative talk that we all have, right? That voice. So I really love that you mentioned that. And I think most people feel like, you know, there's only one way of doing that, but there's so many ways and it's doing what helps you get there, right? So thanks for sharing that. And, you know, if our listeners wanted to get to know a little bit more about you and what you do or check out some of your travel work, is there any links or social media profiles we can connect with? Yeah, 30daytravel.com is our website where we give away a free chapter of the book. So that book kind of leads you through different days of trying new techniques that will lead you to more travel. So one of the days is meditation, actually. So we cover that and journaling and many, many other things. And then just Instagram, everywhere on social media, you could just find me under my name, Kyla Yu. Awesome. Well, thanks for sharing that. And to our listeners, if you want to connect with Kyla, you can also head on over to the TaoSelfConfidence.com and search for Kyla's name. Her show notes will pop up along with everything else that we talked about. And I really just want to thank Kyla today for taking the time to share her story and tips with us on self-confidence. So thank you so much, Kyla. Thank you so much. Not a problem. It was really great having you on the show. And to our listeners, be on the lookout for another new episode of Another Amazing Woman's Journey to Self-Confidence. And we'll talk to you soon. Bye for now. Bye. Thank you for tuning in to another amazing episode of the Tao of Self-Confidence. Get your free self-talk tape for building self-confidence by visiting our website at thetaoofselfconfidence.com. Your inner journey to self-confidence awaits.